Alright guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, just gonna put a new clutch on this today. So I got it draining right now. Um, just took it for a nice spin. Um, letting the oil drain. I already took the oil filter out. Everything's good there. I ended up getting... It's a used clutch, but the good thing is that it's a Henson. Right there. Um, it does have some use, but there's... Let's see if I can get something to show you. I mean, it looks like there's a decent amount of wear, but you can barely even feel that. Like, I mean, it's pretty darn smooth. Just looks like, it's almost like it's wore the finish off. Cause it's not catching on anything. So, it's in pretty good condition. And the thing is, is that it came with all this. And unfortunately, when the guy shipped it, I don't know why he did this, but he put it in a box and then didn't like wrap any of the parts up. And thank God nothing got busted. Um, it's got springs. Well, it's got four springs and four retainer bolts. But it came with the inner basket as well and the pressure plate. And it was supposed to come with the push rod as well as the um, little basket that the push rod sits in. But this is a newer inner basket as well. So it's in pretty good shape. This should cure my issues with uh, the dragging clutch as well as it getting a little... Um, it's like hesitant, not hesitant, it's jerky when I go to take off. Like it goes da 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 And I don't know if that's, and it's not super bad, but when it's like if I come to a stop or it, when it's cold, I put it in gear and I'm not, I don't ha have any extra throttle on, it'll stall the bike. And it jerks the bike too. So um, I'm going to clean all this up and put this in there. So should be good to go. But yeah, so the fifth spring and bolt ended up getting lost, I guess. And the push rod and then the little push rod basket or plate whatever that thing is it goes under here and pushes all this out so that's what we're gonna do today and I did this doesn't look too bad but I do I do have some new ones I ordered two new ones that way I did, just didn't even have to worry about it this looks kind of beat up they say you're supposed to put new ones on every time you change it so and I know people probably don't do that but that's it an H094 Henson clutch component outer basket and then a stock <coughs> inner basket so that's what we're gonna do and then i got some goodies in the mail from good old rocky mountain uh this was a bolt track pack for the crf 250r and then of course i had to get the little uh, 10 piece spoke wrench and this goes down to five millimeter which i need for calvin's bike and I'm sure I'll be able to use, um, there's six points, I, I believe it's six and 6.4 for the CRF, I think. Or maybe it's just 6.4, I can't remember. I think it's 6.4. Everybody says, well, yeah, I use a 6.5 and then someone commented and said 6.4 is better, so. Yep, and then powder coated a few parts for Calvin's 
Sierra 50. Well, it's a DR 50, 50Z or RZ or something like that. But I ended up hitting his rear sprocket and both of his hubs and the brake lever with flat black. And then this is super chrome with uh, candy red over it. And then this looked like it was in pretty good condition, so I'm not going to worry about that. But these will end up going over like this on each side for the bolts. And those will be covered. The bolts will go right there. So I think it'll look pretty good once it's all done. And then I got these fancy new tires here for his bike and one rear new rear inner tube. And then I got me a Tusk brand spoke torque wrench. Uh, definitely wanted to get this. It came with six, 6 6.1 millimeter, 6.3, 6.5, 6.6, 6.8, and 6.9. For some reason, the six, I think it was a 6.8, 6.9 millimeter were both uh, separate packages for some reason. I don't know why, but. Yeah, uh, so this will help get everything buttoned up on Calvin's. And then I will be able to, I bought this. This is a tire mounting kit that will allow me to save the condition of the rims once they're finished. So, And then I had to get a new multimeter. Mine was just junk, so I ended up getting this one. This one got pretty good ra uh, ratings. It's an AMES, or AMES, however you want to say it. Amez, I don't know. But uh, it's compact, it's pretty nice. It's got a little thermal coupler adapter, it's pretty cool. Uh, these little pieces right here pop off. And it's gonna uh, they like clip on there pretty firmly. But I thought that was a pretty cool, pretty cool feature. Because these fit right in the end of spark plugs. And then you just kind of plug it in there and give it a squeeze. And you can check spark plug wires is what I meant, not spark plugs. You can check spark plug wires um, for proper, con well, let's see if they're continuity. You, you know, you move them around and it'll tell you if they got any brakes in them or if they're just, you know, not good at all or if they're running a little high or a little low in resistance, typically a little high, so. But that is that. So uh, I kind of ran into a couple of, uh, I wouldn't say hurdles, but I've had a couple people ask me to do some repairs on their stuff. One of them was my dad. I had to repair. Um, it was an old Craftsman Edger, and it's got the the longer shaft that goes across in the front for the blade, and the end of it broke off. Somebody re welded. He bought it used, and so when he, he got it, he didn't realize it, but it was welded. The end of it was welded on, and they did a crappy job because it was all like bubbled and like there was just it was super porous. So they had the settings wrong on the welder and long story short my nephew was using it on my parents property and it went sh it broke off and shot like three yards down to the neighbor's house and luckily it didn't hit anybody came close to hitting the guy's truck and you know it didn't get that so good thing there so i ended up uh getting some stuff together for that i fixed that i welded it up it's never gonna break again i welded it awesome with a brand spanking new bolt on the end, or type of bolt, it was a socket head, like 12.9 uh, hardness. And then uh, put a coupler over that and then welded that, so it's good to go. And then um, neighbor down the street wanted me to look at some jet skis of theirs. They got two water bikes, or two wet bikes, and then two 800 DIs. So I was taking a look at those all this last week or so. and. Uh, I got one wet bike running, the other one needs a stator, and then figured out because the two jet skis are the same, they're Polaris Virage 800 DIs, and those ended up needing, um, one didn't have sparks, so I took the coil, I suspected the coil, I had tested it first and it just tested weird, so I took the other coil and it didn't test the same, and that one had spark, so I took that coil, it's like a two pack, and so it's got uh, two grounds, it's got uh, Two 12 volts, which for the primary, and then it's got the single uh, spark plug plug on it. So um, I took that one off and put it on the other jet ski, and that jet ski fired up. So now the other one, uh, I put that coil back on there to figure it out. 
That one's got fuel. It's got spark. Um, and it turns over and it backfires. So it's, you know, the power's there. It's just, it almost seems like it's tiny. But when I looked it up, it seems like um, everybody is, the consensus is that the computer is going bad, the ECM. And those are like 750 bucks used. So I don't know if you got anybody knows of anybody that has one of those. But yeah, if you do, let me know. And maybe we can work out a deal on something, you know, whatever. Um, so that's probably what that's going to need. Uh, I'm going to verify, though. I'm going to take the ECM off the one and put it on the other and see if it fires up fine. And if it does, then for sure that's what it is. So, But for now, we're going to put this clutch on this bike. So uh, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, though, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. That way you guys can come on back and check out what we got going on. So, all right, stay tuned. We're going to get into this thing. All right, so we got the clutch pack out. And as you can see, I was dealing with some pretty extensive ridging there. And it looks like it's even on both sides. Not so much the opposite side, but it's on the outer basket and the inner basket. And what that does is that doesn't allow the clutch pack to slip and slide wherever it wants inside these grooves here and inside those grooves. And so what ends up happening is that the clutch packs will stick in these grooves instead of being able to slide just a millimeter up and that causes the clutch plate to and springs to compress the discs and steel plates the fibers and steel plates just enough to where 
it will grab too much and even when the clutch is pulled and that plate is pushed it they just won't slip enough past that so that's what I'm going to do that's the whole reason that I'm replacing all this stuff all this seems to look good so the next step is to go ahead and remove both of these and uh, we'll get all this stuff out of here and get the new stuff cleaned up and back in Alright guys, so this is what I'm going to do. I don't have a clutch holding tool and I need to get this done now. So I'm just going to take a pair of these C-clamp vice grips and I'm going to cut them and weld these pieces of C-channel on to them. Alright, we are back and this is the tool. Still a little warm. Let's try this tool out. Let's get a real good look at this. <clears throat> oh yeah. Gee, I wonder why I was having such problems. Look at the ridges on that, guys. Yikes. Well, the good thing is, shit going bye-bye. Got the big washer there. That one seems fine. Doesn't seem like those dampers are deteriorated at all, so. Wow, was a. Uh, Look at that. Look at the ridges right there. Are you serious? Man, this thing's going to be so much nicer when I put it back together. Can't wait! Wow, look at that. I mean, I'm sure some people would fix this, and that's fine, but I'm good. <laughs> I'm not going to even worry about it. All right, so let's get the new stuff cleaned up. And we'll put this back together. All right, so when you put this thrust washer in, there are two different sides here. So you have a really sharp edge on the inner bore, and then you have a beveled edge on the inner bore. So you want the beveled edge to face out. Then you got your Another washer in there. 
And then your new lock washer 90445-KAE-000. Genuine Honda parts, straight from Japan. And this nut gets torqued down to 51 foot pounds. Going to attach our tool first. <clears throat> Get our big torque monkey out. It's fifty fifty one. Going to bend our tabs up. And we put our push rod cap. I don't know if we can do this, let's see. <laughs> it's going slow and steady. <clears throat> Probably could have done them one on by one, but whatever. We're gonna get these in here and be done with it. Just like that. We get our cap. Let's make sure all of our bolts are good. They look good to me. But I'm gonna take them out anyways. And I'm gonna clean them off real quick. Right. Nine foot pounds for each one of these bolts. All right, next step is to get this cover back on. I'm gonna clean up this gasket surface, just wipe it clean and dry. Looks like a little bit of this gasket broke, but the good thing is, is that it's at the top and there is a seal above the, or uh, around the coolant port, so it's probably not going to matter, but I'm going to go ahead and just dab a little, little bit of the right stuff on there. We should be good to go. It's all about prep, boys. It's all about prep. 
You don't want any oil on a ceiling surface. Well, gasket wise, just a little hair. We'll clean up the cover. Same way, we'll just use a little bit of brake cleaner. I'm gonna clean up this oil seal here real quick too. The shaft looks pretty clean, but we're gonna dab it with some some grease. We'll do the same thing in the oil seal. Right. Let me show you guys. All right, so this one right here, look how long that is compared to the other ones. Now watch. That one sinks really far in there it's not even a quarter inch above the case so that's always a good indication yeah sure i could go look at the parts thing but you know there's just some stuff that's not rocket science guys you just gotta take your time do it right just gonna go around Snug them all up first. Let them settle in. Get some grab. Compress that gasket again. If you guys put a little tiny thin layer of oil or grease, and I'm talking just wipe it, not just to leave a residue. You, you know, your gaskets aren't gonna typically rip. Let's do six. I don't trust this thing. We'll start with five and a half. <laughs> five and a half. Oh, there's tons of stuff I could do. I can make this water pump anodized red. I don't need to buy one. Although, there are pumps that are better flowing, but it's the way they designed it. It should be fine. Amazing that most of this, these, this whole engine's held together with seven foot pounds. <laughs> Worth a torque. At least the cases are. <laughs> All right, well, bump it up to seven. All right, that's that. We'll reposition the exhaust clamp here. We'll put our kickstart lever on. Go ahead and clean this off. Let's put some anti seize on there. Put some Loctite on there. It's blue. Want to just give a warning? Okay. Thanks, bud. All right. It's just about all we're gonna do for now. Twenty. I think that's good. Good deal. All right. I'm gonna powder coat the cover and be back.
All right, guys, so that's it. It's on. About to go take this thing for a ride. She's all filled up with fluids. Turned out pretty good.